actually, uh, my management is Circle, Circle Confusion, and at the time I was pitching it here. For those of you who don't know, Circle Confusion is kind of in charge of doing The Walking Dead. And they were like, ah, zombie movies are played out. You don't want to do a zombie movie. <laughs> we, we didn't even find a hook. So it was, uh, it, was, it was the hook. The hook was making the native people immune to the zombie plague. And it just started from there, and it, 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 uh, it kind of snowballed. That idea snowballed because it was like, what would the ramifications be of uh, making the native people immune to the zombie plague? And all these kind of uh, political, the, the political fallout came from that idea. It wasn't anything as, uh, I didn't set out to make a political movie, but it just kind of, it, it spiraled from that initial idea of, of making the native people immune. And, and so that, pro that but you know, it, it didn't start from a political place, but as the movie you know, took on that dimension, um, what, what were you, you're drawing from your own experience, but what were you drawing from in terms of putting together the story and the characters that would be featured in the story? I grew up, I grew up uh, my first experience that I remember was uh, being raided by the SQ during a, like a, a salmon crackdown. Like they thought our our reserve was fishing too much salmon, so it kind of it it, it started from there. And anybody who's familiar with Ali Sabamsko's films will see a lot of the same imagery up there. And it was uh, it was that movie and uh, a movie called Instant Restoration, another one called Two Hundred Seven Years of Resistance. That those are two films that I kind of drew from in terms of just getting some of that imagery down. But I think it was just. Uh, from that point on, it was just kind of like, you know, shit needs to happen. Something needs to happen. Something needs to kind of drive the story from one scene to the next. So you can, you can kind of see it up there, right? It's just like a character stuff, and somebody shits on a car, and a character stuff, and somebody gets their hips on, and a chainsaw, and character stuff, and then somebody walks into a snowblower. <laughs> it was kind of, that, that was the rhythm that we set up to, to kind of capture. That, that, final, that final image uh, of your grandfather with the samurai sword holding the hand is such an incredible image. Um, and, that you, and that, to me, struck me as, as drawn from those films that you mentioned, that, 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 was that line that he says that fell. Yeah, that's it's a, it's a direct reference uh, to an incident at rest. Which, like, again, if you see it, you see the old man say, you know, I, I took my axe and I drew a line and I dared to step over. So that was a direct reference to that. And to me, it had to be ambiguous, right? So if it ended with the old man actually on the pillar, on the monolith doing that, it, you get a like, concrete idea that he survived. But he wanted to kind of leave it ambiguous so it could have been a fantasy. So we left it as animation. And we left it as kind of up in the air as to whether or not he survived. So Stone Horse may or may not be in a sequel. <laughs> Well, let's hear from the cast. Uh, when you first encountered uh, Jeff's screenplay, what were your, sort of your first impressions of this project? What excited you about it? Let's go down the line. Um, I thought it was amazing. I think you know the audition process was the fact that you don't get that character often or ever, and I think from that moment I just you know called two or three of my actor friends. I was like, let's delve into these sides and let's try to put the strongest tape together so I can would be a part of this film and really was and turned into like an honor just to, to, to be a part of it. But yeah. Um Jeff's scripts are actually really quite beautiful when you read them. Like uh, the description of, of the ship that hit the windshield is that he was like it hit it hits like a moldering melon. <laughs> it explodes like a moldering melon. And I can't, I can't believe you remember that. Well, your scripts are all like that. It was like really intense um, and beautiful and poetic. And uh, I love zombies. I love horror. Um, but you know, as you can see, you know these stories are up, about a lot more than that. It was, I, was, I was really moved. I'm kind of at a loss for words. Um, thank you, Jeff. Like, I'm gonna get emotional. What a, what a tremendous accomplishment. Like, this is
feel the same way. I feel like I got the script and it was just so crazy. I didn't really know what was going on and then I think I talked to Jeff on the phone and he um, cleared some things up for me and explained it and then I was, I was all in. Yeah, I loved it. I could hear half the stuff you were saying so I'm just gonna, whatever I think you. <laughs> uh, there was, a, there was a, a writing many, many years ago that went like, put the rubber mouse away and the spool away, what was gay and shy will not want them anymore. I wonder why, and I wonder how, but more so how, could a, such a thing as a dead little kitten hold such an immense thing as death. And I think about all the talent and the emotions that went into all these roles to tell the story. And I'm just forever, my rest of my life will be glad that I'm a part of this. And thank you for watching this. <laughs> well, it's my first time seeing anything of it, really. After seeing it, I think like, I should have read the screenplay. <laughs> Damn, that was crazy. I did not know what was coming. <laughs> no, I, I kind of have to believe you because he probably knows that we're cast him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really, really fortunate to be part of this family. This family. Thank let's, you. Let's give it up for the cast. No, no, no.
So, I mean, as a as a kind of survey, that's that's kind of what it means to me. And it's yours now. And the question really is, what what does it mean to you? Uh, right there. The questions about the set pieces in the film and what sort of, I guess, genre influences that you were drawing upon for some of those sequences or historical. Um, we were kind of, when you talk about just the technique of it, uh, Michelle and I, the guy who shot the film, was somewhere in the audience. Uh, Let's give him a round of applause. Where is he? Stand up! Stand up! <laughs> trying to create like a, a Dante's Inferno. We were trying to create a bit of a hellscape. And the first half of it was really just kind of presenting the topography, yeah. the idea that you're separating the town by a bridge. Um, so you see it featured quite a lot. Uh, you always get kind of, kind of reminded there's a bridge separating the two towns. So when you bring it back in the first, the first beats of the second act, you're, you're kind of reminded. Again, another Another allusion to 207 years of existence where the bridge was under uh, blockades for the, the summer of the Oka crisis. And I think uh, we, we kind of wanted to make a, well for me anyway, one of my influences was uh, Conan. I say that all the time, right? Every fucking film I do, oh, it's Conan. <laughs> so I think we wanted to make a, a kind of medieval, medieval uh, Western. I mean, on the Western zombie film. On the note of Conan, I, I, I mean, or just the, this movie is positively metal at times. Like, it's, it's really gnarly. There's some incredible gore, some incredible effects. I'd love to hear about the challenges and pulling off those some sequences, and also from the cast of what it was like to get that messy. <laughs> um, for us, we obviously had, uh, you know, we had to make a ten million dollar movie on a budget half that size, so. If you look at it for a second time, you're going to see a lot of the violence happens off screen and you're just stumbling on it, right? Like the guy tumbling down from the thing, like he falls from the second floor in front of you, his head gets blown off. That's, it's, it's not easy, but it's easier in terms of uh, special effects because you're doing it CGI. So we have to kind of pick our moments. And uh, another one would be the little girl getting killed with that giant axe. You, you feel the weight of the axe, but you never actually see it impact. Here. And you, you, you get a lot of stuff like that, like a lot of violence happens off screen. And we were going to pick our moments, like the uh, Kisuku's fight scene at the end with the sword. Like we, we had to show some of those beats. So it was, it was, it was that. It was picking our moments to stuff that meant something. And the, uh, the sequence on the bridge, you know, a lot of that didn't necessarily happen off screen, but you kind of felt the weight of it just when you saw those blades start. Like everybody, you could feel the reaction in the room, everybody kind of got a laugh out of it, right? Like once you saw that, those blades start. And I think it was more the idea of showing after six months how smart these guys got when it came to killing zombies. It wasn't just like, oh, we're gonna stumble in there and just, you know, try to kill stuff. It was like they, they put real thought into it and they've been doing it for a while and they became zombie killers, <laughs> pretty adept zombie killers. You get the impression they were never really afraid of the zombies ever, and it was only until like they got overwhelmed that you start seeing them kind of, you know, make, a, make an attempt to run away from them. Whereas towards the end, it was just the old man in the sword, and he even took his gun off. That was the most badass moment for me. Like, <laughs> he takes the fucking gun off first, like, oh, I'm gonna need this. <laughs> and, and, he, and he uses his sword to, to fend off the zombies. I'd love to hear a bit from the cast about sort of the gore and stuff, and then I'm going to throw to the balcony for the last question, but let's hear from the cast about um, those set pieces. These kinds of films were challenging, like physically challenging, um, you know, we're cold, battling things, but actually the thing that I, am, am, that lingers with me is um, the after effects of violence, like you, 
you're talking about that we don't show it, but actually you spend a lot of time dealing with the aftermath of violence, right? Like how, how you don't see the fruit come out of my butt. <laughs> sure, you're dealing with the aftermath. You just the see the huge <laughs> shit on the windshield. Yeah. Should be the metaphor where you. So the next film, Jeff wants to see the shit exit the black. <laughs> And I don't mean to plug tomorrow night, but you might see that tomorrow night. Um, there was a question up at the at the top there. You've been very patient. Yes. What was that? Yeah. And I'll repeat it in case. This is a very good question about the title of Blood Quantum. It's maybe a question we may not have time to unpack on this stage, but I, the, the floor is yours, Jeff, for, very, for as for as much time as we do have. That, that is a really fucking long answer. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not something, like even just explaining what that is, is uh, like a, a it's, it's like a dissertation. Because every tribe has its definition of what it actually means, but basically it's a caste system introduced by, by colonial, um, colonial society that introduced the concept of race to native people in an attempt to breed them out of existence, basically. The, if you're half-breed, you're no longer native, i.e. You're, no uh, you're no longer legally obliged to honor your treaty rights to this half-breed person. So it was kind of taking that idea and flipping it on its head where you're using it as a, as a, as a concept of, of real physical immunity to a, a, a zombie plague. In effect, this idea of blood quantum isolates full-blooded Native Americans into this one concentrated area, making them all kind of immune to this plague. And for me, the idea that there's this interracial couple that has this baby that's immune it's almost like a symbol of the future, right? You're, you're, you're taking this couple and this, this, this baby born out of what you assume is love, young love, and you're, you're kind of using it as a symbol of the future. You, like, I don't know if anybody noticed that the film started with the elder and ended with the young... The youngest actor in the movie. <laughs> yes, it, it ended with the, exactly the, the, the baby kind of looking off into the future, it both started and ended on the water. It's what we call in the business as symbolic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Everyone, please give it up for Jeff, the cast of Black Quantum. Remember to vote for the film. Tip.net slash vote. The film screens again tomorrow, but I believe it's on sale, but if you have any friends, tell them to get in that rush line. Thank you so much.